Do you hear the birds? I can hear them chirping. And now I'm going to talk about my painting. Hello, Melody Ears. It's Eleanor Edwards here, and I would like to share with you some of my paintings. I'm, I've been working on a body of work that is made up of three pieces, and this one is in a Tromsoel style. Uh, it's set behind Florence as a summer villa for the Medici family, who were patrons of the art. The crest of the Medici family is an element that I'm going to put into this painting. Up the top I'll be adding a relief of one of the Medicis from the Uffizi Museum and on the other side the Medici family crest. Since this is set in Florence I thought a nice touch would be Venus from Botticelli's Birth of Venus down here in this portion of the painting and over here I've got an angel stylized in a way that looks like Caravaggio's work. I've also added a lovely centerpiece which is a fountain. Also I have the Earth Mother Gaia in the hillside so I wanted it to kind of look subtle but it's almost like oh my gosh there's someone in the hillside. So most of this is under painting at the moment but I'm excited to paint along with you. Watch out for some time lapse of the mm. creation of this painting. I decided to set my painting in early afternoon, meaning that the light would just come over the portico, casting a shadow upon the path and the lawn. Here I am measuring and ruling the lines in the direction of the vanishing point so that the painting has correct perspective. Many aspects of this painting, since it heavily features architecture, requires measuring and calculating. Getting the vanishing point right in this painting was especially important since vanishing point ended up being my title for this work. My painting is in a trompe style which is French for tricking the eye, and it's an illusionary wall painting. But for the purposes of my painting and having to create it in three different locations, I've done it on a canvas so that it's easily transportable. A trompe wall gives the impression of a three-dimensional reality on a two-dimensional surface. I developed the paths to make them look more textural, with methods such as scumbling, splatting, and dabbing. I also measured out and created a fence in the background. I then developed the Medici shield, which encapsulates the family's wealth with images of medicine balls and coins. So I've corrected my vanishing point and moved it up to your direct line of sight when this will be hanging on a wall. So that's corrected a lot of the issues that I found with my proportions in my painting. And so I've measured out everything mathematically and as you can see, I've added a path going around the fountain and these are going up to the vanishing point. So how I got its thickness was by finding the point that I wanted it to go to, so at the bottom of this pillar here, say, and figured out how thick I wanted it, where it would start, and then drawing up to the vanishing point. And then I had a nice little path here that gets thinner as it goes further away and so using the vanishing point has really helped me to nail the perspective. I have also dulled down the colour a bit of the mountains and Gaia with a yellow wash and that's really helped to resonate what time of day it is. It was very dark for the time of day that I am painting this in. I haven't done the grass as of yet. I've shrunk, shrunken the fountain and made sure that it's mathematically correct. And as you can see, these all the lines on the fountain are still going up to the vanishing point. So it's a really crucial part of my painting. And today I am working on my dear Venus over here. So I've got some colors mixed up. Well, I haven't mixed them yet, but 
I put the colors on my palette to create her beautiful golden hair and I might fix up her figure. I need to make her look a little bit more slender. And I'm also going to work on Venus's face, as well as putting some butterfly wings on Caravaggio's angel. So as I worked on creating the likeness of Venus, I used a device to display the original painting Botticelli's Birth of Venus for reference. I find that I'm quite good at copying things, so it's useful for me to be able to look back at the source that I'm working from and zoom in on parts. I've just marked in the shape of her hair and done an underpainting for it, and now that it's dry, I'm going to go in and match up all the shades and add all the strands. So it will look luscious. And of course, do her beautiful face. This is Venus, everybody. A few fun facts about Botticelli's Birth of Venus. The painting was completed in 1486. The nudity featured in this painting was actually very unusual for the time. So when the bonfire of the vanities was lit in 1497, Mirrors, artworks, jewellery, dice, rings and any other items believed to promote sin were tossed into the fire, but Botticelli's birth of Venus was spared. Simonetta Catatonio de Vespucci was the muse for the birth of Venus. She is thought to be the most beautiful woman in Italy and unfortunately she died pretty young of consumption and I'll let you make your own conclusions about the fact that Botticelli asked to be buried at her feet when he died. So today I've done the lawn. I've used masking tape, which I still need to pull off, to get precise lines against the pillars and to not get on the path of the fountain. Um, and so that's to get the lawn and to papyri and the hedges. I've also added a green wash over the mountains and hills and this is to dial it back a bit because it was very dark. I've also done some scumbling and textural effect on the pillars all the way around to give it that more of a three-dimensional look and as you can see the swipes are kind of curving a bit which does make it look more cylindrical. I've done more of Venus, but I do want to fix her up a bit further. I want to extend the shins and uh, fix up the shading, like this portion of her face is a bit too dark and I want to lighten that up. So I'm just going to work a bit more on the Medici family shield and also do some wings on Caravaggio's angel. As well as working on my fountain, you may have noticed that I shrunk it in size and I realigned it and did some more maths to make sure that it meets up with the vanishing point. Obviously, I need to erase the lines that I was working off here. So I'm going back over my underpainting, giving the colour more depth and correcting any proportion and alignment errors. You might also be able to see in the top right corner I've painted a statue or in this context a carving of the Medici family member Cosimo. Here I'm filling in the outline I made for Caravaggio's angels when I was determining the placement and since I'm happy with the placement here I'm filling in the underpainting and beginning to layer the skin on top. So having the direction the source of light was coming from in mind meant that I was able to determine where the light would land and where the shadows would be cast, meaning I could use the right tones in the right places. I was very experimental when it came to Caravaggio's angel's wings. I tried to dip different parts of my brush in different colours so I didn't get a monotone colour and then I'd use a flicking technique, just like a flick of the wrist upwards to get that feathered effect. 
and for the clothing I just kind of got a blob of paint and squiggled it onto him. <laughs> I also worked on giving the fountain more dimension through the use of light and shade and I think that the downsizing of the fountain really helped to ground it within the painting. I'm just filling in the garden now that I've finished the fountain. So as you can see it's got water coming down and now I'm just doing some tapiri and some trees over in the distance over near the back path and the hedges. So my composition was inspired by Rainer Maria Letzky. He's a German artist and mural painter and is often referred to as the modern day Michelangelo. Here is the work of his that inspired me to take on this trombloil style. But I also had my own twist on it with things such as the Earth Mother in the background. I also embedded the Viconti tarot deck in the bottom left corner. This refers to approximately 15 decks of incomplete sets from the Middle Ages of the 15th century. I feature the hangman on the box and the fool spilling out of the pack. An appropriation of Botticelli's Venus was actually the first portrait I ever painted, and I found that Venus isn't actually anatomically correct. So in fact, this painting isn't the best reference if you're aiming for proportional body parts. And finally, I painted vines under the pillars. I completed this painting gradually over four months, and I started off with an oil underpainting and because of time reasons, it became multimedia with me doing the rest in acrylic paint. The finished painting is a bit different to my initial idea. Some things in my initial idea I didn't carry through into the final product, so like nymphs in the fountain or angels in the clouds. And elements that I didn't put in my initial idea are here. So the Medici family shield and the statue, as well as Caravaggio's angels and the birth of Venus likeness. So many elements came in and out of this painting and I think it came up with quite a good result because over across my body of work I am exploring the history of art and different elements within that and so this is looking at the patronage and the wealth associated with the art as well as a stage in art history. So here we have it, the vanishing point. Patrons and their muses at the Medici summer villa in a trompe style. I hope you enjoyed my painting Ravel and Oration. Please like my video and I'll see you next time. Thanks Melody Ears. And of course, patting your cat is an essential part of the art making process.